Welcome to this week's episode of What's in the Box. I am your host, GQ. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Ah, you like the video, hit the notification bell, share the video, leave some comments and all that other good stuff. Make sure you check out culturejunkies.net. Don't forget we are on twitch.tv slash culturejunkies. We have our live show on Wednesday and Great Dadakuji, Kenshiro, King Amarok are doing some streaming throughout the week. So a lot of stuff to keep you guys busy in the Culture Junkie Nation. So today, I'm gonna to be unboxing you know what, let's just open it. I'm not even gonna give any clues. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you looked at the thumbnail, you probably got an idea, or looked at the title of the video, you got an idea. But if you just stumbled across this as one of your next notifications in my playlist, then you might not know exactly what's gonna be uh, coming out of this box here. So let's take a look. be a little bit tougher to see I mean this is something from sideshow but and it is a six scale but it is not under the hot toys or sideshow line so it's a little bit different and oh yeah that box is looking cool already you can see it, it clearly says the princess bride right there obviously behind all this plastic so let's get the plastic out of your way all right okay so obviously it's an item from the princess bride princess bride right there on the front it's actually made to look like a book so you have the spine of the book with the princess bride you have that beautiful image of the uh, classic princess bride silhouette that everybody knows and of course the book style look on the front and i believe this one actually has a window Give you guys a quick peek at the window. Might get a little bit of glare, but we have Westley, Dread Pirate Roberts version, which is of course what he looked like throughout the majority of the film. That looks really cool, and they've got a nice shot of Westley. You can see in the overhead shot there. Um, yeah, basically what the figure is going to look like. I mean, it. I like it. Let's get this thing opened and see what we've got. Now, Princess Bride, uh, directed by Rob Reiner. Um, amazing film. It's, it's literally one of those classic films that I hope never, ever gets remade. It was basically perfect the way it is, and I hope that they never, ever mess with that classic. Uh, the fencing scene between uh, Inigo Montoya and um, and Wesley is just, it's untouchable. I mean, like the sword fight scene was just amazing. And I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that. And it's just one of those films that I hope they don't ever try to, oh, we're gonna improve it. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's good the way it is. Everything was perfectly cast. Just, it's just great film. So I like the homage that they did to it in Deadpool, Once Upon a Deadpool, but yeah, they don't ever need to touch that one. So you got their little standard instruction book and some information about do's and don'ts with figures. I've been seeing this one on the Sideshow website for quite a while. And um, I don't know, for some reason, I just never really thought about getting it. And then it hit that last chance um, quali uh, classification. And I was like, you know what? It's cheaper than the average um, six scale figure, so I decided to just go ahead and get it. And they have got, and you guys will obviously get your close ups. You definitely know that. Um, please let the boot come off easy, the boot wrapping. Perfect. Easy boot wrapping. Gotta love that. Let's see if the right boot is as uh, cooperative. Almost there. These big buccaneer boots, a little bit harder to get around. And we've got it. Hand should be easy, hopefully. Now we've got, let's get these hands. I don't let the boots be easy and the hands be tough. And it looks like that's exactly what we're running into. 
They suck for that sometimes. All right, let's get that taken care of real quick. Either got to be one or the other. This can't have them both be nice and easy anymore. It's so unfortunate. So, let's carefully. I don't want to damage this because he's got that whole cloth outfit on. And we do not want to mess that up. with two different portraits um, one of course being Wesley uh, unmasked and then of course the other being Dread Pirate Roberts which uh, looks amazing actually so I would definitely be doing a head swap for that because I like that look a little bit more um, standard fare for uh, again like I said it's not a uh, sideshow directly it's actually a different company but um, his outfit looks really good, actually. I mean, they've got all the wrinkles and the little accoutrements and all in the right places. They've got his, um, almost grabbed the exact blade. That would have kind of been interesting. His sword is perfect. And uh, as you know, with the unboxing, there's another sword that I am a huge fan of from the Princess Bride. So that will possibly be making a, uh, an appearance at some point. Probably the next unboxing. Um, yeah, sword and sheath, it's complete. Obviously functioning sword. So the sheath can uh, be put on his back here. And let's see, obviously his belt moves around. What I liked about um, the film, and especially that scene where he and uh, Neo Montoya met for the first time, he actually has this sliding uh, sheath for his, for his sword. And of course, spoilers for a over 30 year old film, um, part of the intri intrigue of that fight was that neither one of them were using their dominant hand to fight with when they first started fighting because in Neo, because he hadn't had a sword fight in so many years against what he feels was going to be a worthy opponent, he wanted it to last longer. And then, of course, Wesley, who was at the time the Dread Pirate Roberts, um, was kind of, I guess, testing him. Because it's like he already knew he was just an amazing sword fighter. But Wesley actually, you know, Neo held, was actually wearing his sheath on the proper side for him, you know, a right handed fighter. But he already had his sword drawn, if you notice in that scene. Because uh, he had, you know, of course, handed it to. Um, to uh, Wesley to examine and you know, get told him the tale of his, of his father and uh, how Count Rugen had killed him. But the interesting thing about Wesley is he was wearing his sheath behind his back and since it's, you know, you can basically swap sides with it, you couldn't tell which hand was his dominant hand. So he actually moved his sword, if you notice in that scene, he moved his sword to draw with his left hand as if that was his dominant hand you know, and just a little bit of trickery. So, I mean, it's the scene, that's why I, I think with that particular film, yes, I'm just gonna pull his head off and switch because I, I gotta go Dread Power Roberts. Um, that's what I love so much about that film, just in general, those little small nuances um, that, you know, you just might not notice until, you know, you watch the movie a few times. And yeah, let's, I think I'm gonna display him because he even comes with this little goblet, which is of course, <laughs> from the scene between him and Ficini. Uh, and it even has a little bit of, a little fake wine in there. So uh, obviously they pour the wine for the uh, Iocane powder, which he has, and a, uh, is a poison that you can neither taste nor smell nor uh, taste. Uh, taste, smell, or um, touch, obviously. So uh, he spent a couple years um, building up an immunity to Iocane powder. Uh, and of course, uh, King Humperdinck comes up, The super tracker King Humperdinck and takes a whiff of it and knows that it's Iowa Game Powder. It's like, but you can't smell it, but whatever. Love, love that movie. And again, uh, this is a really great representation of Wesley. You're going to get some awesome, awesome close-up photos of this. Of course, he'll be on the turntable. He stands really well on his own. I mean, he obviously does come with a stand, like all six scale figures should, but I don't think I'm actually going to need it. 
Man, can you, could you be any noisier? Whatever, you'll get to stand in some photos too because that thing does not want to come out. So, for what's in the box, I am GQ. This is the six scale Westley as Dread Pirate Roberts figure from Sideshow. There's still a few left. Sideshow sent a check for that free advertisement. Uh, and I think it's definitely worth the money. I mean, this great likeness, awesome movie. And speaking of awesome, if you'd like to be awesome like our Culture Junkies level patrons, Demarcus Smith, Fab Nerd Life, Nanette Net, and The Iguana Man, go over to uh, patreon.com slash culture junkies. Consider uh, using our highest level tier if you want to get a shout out, or for as little as a dollar a month, not even a dollar a day like some of those other greedy charities. You can support a culture junkie. We appreciate all of the support, whether it be likes, love, share, just telling people about culture junkies. Appreciate all of the support you guys give us. And once again, for What's in the Box, I'm GQ, and I'll see you guys next time.